and the synesthesia thing that you were training yourself for, like making the mind map and all those things. Did you uh-huh. train more about in that field? Yeah, yeah, I made some interesting progress in that. I don't know where that comes from. It's like a thing where I can sort of see things in graphs and they have like weird qualities and so on. It's really it's sort of this interesting additional layer that feels pretty intuitive and I can just sort of get a sense of things and of ideas and so on there. Mm-hmm. But um, in some sense, this extends to some more um, like explicit or and also more intentional mental imagery that I'm working with. Mm-hmm. Um, one of which has always been the garden. Like the garden is a thing that I've for a long time really worked on as a sort of mental place that I can go to. Mm-hmm. If I encounter a new idea, I put it into the garden and then I sort of develop a sense for where to put it and like how to create the right environment for the idea to sort of grow, right? Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. later on, I return to the idea and then I see what I find and this basically projects projects it into this sort of synesthesia thing, and then again to get a bunch of associations. Mm-hmm. This is sort of the like common mechanism. Mm-hmm. And I really trained myself to like use this garden. And uh, for instance, like whenever I sort of I see a paper or whatever that I find interesting, I might just say, okay, I'm just going to read the abstract, and I'm going to sort of put something from that into the garden, mm-hmm. and then I'm going to return to it later. I'm going to think about that now that I have sort of, that it has grown a bit. Mm-hmm. Now I'm going to read the paper and I'm going to sort of compare this. Mm-hmm. How good is my generative process just based on these couple of ideas? Have I generated interesting stuff about this? Have I replicated things that are now in the paper? Um, are there interesting divergences? Are there differences? Like, have I trained myself to be a good yeah. generator? It's like an example. Things that really make sense. Yeah, yeah. It, it becomes like an exam for your for your garden. Like you take the abstract ideas and then you see the whether the things that I generated is similar to the things that is done in paper. So how much is the yeah? And then I can make a bit of a judgment. Like maybe I like that I have like some different ideas compared to what's in the paper. Mm-hmm. Maybe there's like a disagreement that's really good to pay attention to. Mm-hmm. That's a good mechanism. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so I have the garden. I've developed this for a long time. Like this is part of what sort of I really try to do as a as a research as an independent researcher. And like I try to be a, like a generalist and a good first principles thinker Mm -hmm. and like Mm -hmm. the garden is really sort of first principles place Mm -hmm. um and now i'm trying to sort of right now there are two like new big things in the garden that are growing there right now and those are supposed to become two new places um which is one thing is the temple and the other thing is a sort of war tent uh Mm -hmm. where like a sort of strategic tent you like it's it's not on the bottom battlefield, it's sort of a little bit removed. You have like this tent, there's a big desk in the middle of it with a map, mm-hmm. and you can do the whole strategic planning, you know, shoving, you know, little symbols of troops around and so on. Like it's that kind of place. Um and um so these are two places that I'm sort of cultivating more for like being able to sort of go out more proactively in the world and being able to sort of do certain things that the garden doesn't really afford me as a like a good ability basically like the garden is really good for contemplation like spending a lot of time on things like good for slack time and so on um okay so briefly to go through the two things like the temple is the idea being guided by some higher spirit so you're trying to be in service of something um maybe in service of the spirit that's sort of guiding humanity could be in service of some sort of cultural spirit um and the temple is a place where you try to get into a sort of flow state basically so you just channel something you let something else act through you some higher purpose some higher force or higher vision and this makes things a lot easier for you as a person because you just have this mission you have this clarity you have a path so if you're in the temple you have an intuition about what step would follow the right path and you can just sort of follow this path and things will feel a lot less effortful um, if you're not taking them personally this way right like you're just a sort of avatar acting out some some, some higher thing um, you feel connected to that you have a sense of sort of connectivity and a sense of you know being part of a yeah. Coll- collaboration or like, yeah. you, you know th- yeah, yeah. that sort of being part of something greater and uh that just makes things easier like that's a powerful mode to be in mm-hmm. uh and also there's a lot of narrative force to it yeah, sure. um it's like yeah. you can re- really convince people because you are so certain of what you're doing and so on i've made experiences with this in the past mm-hmm. and i haven't always liked it it's but it's a powerful thing and i then personally i'm quite capable of like the energy like holding or like using the energy that such a place has Mm -hmm. just in terms of really having a lot of narrative force convincing people to help me with something to do something 
uh, to believe something and so on. Uh, it's a dangerous place, but this is sort of what this place is about. It's sort of that sort of capability. It's that sort of um, going out into the world and doing things mm -hmm. sort of thing. And the what hand yeah. is um, the more cunning thing. Like it's more explicit. It's more strategic. It's like, okay, let's, let's just be really analytic about this and try to sort of anticipate um, what the other person is doing um, and what I should do. Like, how do we sort of have this compositional thing? Um, for instance, could just be project management sort of in particular, like I'm just going to be here. I need to sort of really think about this. Um, so usually I find this sort of what hand activity either it sort of feels too antagonistic for me because I'm actually competing with someone and I don't like that personally that much, or um, it's sort of boring to me because it's all the details um of what actually needs to get done and when and so on like doing this sort of planning thing in this sort of very explicit way uh that's what the what hand is basically about um there's sort of different possible adversaries that you could sort of play against so to speak in the what hand um there are different aspects to it uh but basically you sort of go there because you need to accomplish something really concrete you sort of need to get a specific task done you have certain desiderata you have pretty clear guidelines, pretty clear constraints around what needs to be accomplished. And you just want to be efficient about it. You want to make sure that you've sort of anticipated what could go wrong and are uh, just explicit in this way. Um, and and then you just go do it, basically. Uh, like there's a sort of finality to it where it's just clear, okay, now I'm done with the planning thing. Now comes the next thing. There's no uncertainty about that here. I always know what the next step on the list is. Um, and it's less this thing of being guided, uh, like in the temple. It's more like this, okay, I have this I have these things to do. Uh, I understood this very well. I'll, I'll tell you how I understood this very well. Firstly, uh, what what segments or, do, or architecture do you have for your emotional aspects of human being? How do you manage that? Is there any place like some new architect temple or there's some, some new temple or some new thing for emotion things? Emotionally, I'm working with like two models, basically like the inner child and the inner adult. This is sort of the two main images that I have. Mm -hmm. And um, or like the inner parent, you could also say, I'm either like the inner adult right now, or I'm like, I'm taking a perspective, basically. I'm mm -hmm. taking the perspective of the inner child, yeah, I'm taking idea. the perspective of the inner adult, or I'm ta taking the perspective of the sort of whole being, basically. Mm -hmm. And I'm sort of, and sort of based on which emotions I need to sort of process or like how I need to like look at a situation, mm -hmm. um, whether I want to like connect with another person and so on, I'm sort of going into one of these three places and looking at either one, two, three, or like combinations of two, or like all three. Mm -hmm. uh, so what you basically described right now is what I call persona system. If you again go on my website, in the Captain X segment, there is this thing called persona system in which I have written the same things that you talked in different language. The thing that you're calling temple is what I call Madhusudan persona. The thing that you're calling the war zone thing is what I call Captain X persona. The thing that you, the garden thing that you're talking about is what I call Maneshwar persona. So these are the three personas. There were there are other one persona of Nikov, and then there is other aspect of Dove. The, you did not mention anything about Dove in all these things. That's why I asked. The Dove is basically the emotional thing that you're talking about. But uh, the the way that you're talking about the perspective word that you use that that is very uh, that is very much uh, resonating with me because I also use the exact term perspective whenever I have to talk. But uh, what you're talking about right now, as you're saying that you look at uh, the emotion thing from three different places that you have right now. I used to do this. I did this for two, three years, but then I, th this is what I called as masked emotion or illusory emotions because perspectives are not personas and not aspects. Like you are not actually having those emotions. It is looking from some aspect. Like, uh, you cannot look from your garden to your temple and say that you're in temple. You'll have to be in temple to be in temple. Similarly, yeah. uh, what I what what conclusion that I came to is, is is you cannot simulate the other aspects by being into a one one aspect. So and uh, initially I was doing the same thing. I was using Maneshwar and my spy to simulate my dove. But then I realized that to I'll have to make something like dove to actually be dove to actually have those emotions. And then there would be like real emotion. It's a whole lot thing. We can again talk about this for an hour if we if we come to this. It is called Persona System. I will send you some links about this. You can go and find this on my website. There is a the Persona System in which I have described it very briefly, not properly described, especially the way that you are. Because if I talk about the Persona System in a way that you talk to me, no one will understand what I'm talking about. They will not be able to understand what is he's talking about. So I have written them down in a way that they can understand, like in a fable story manner, <laughs> not in a like technical manner. 
so if you read the persona system you'll understand this thing you know it, it is in a story mode yeah this is a good way that you're using your synesthesia ability to de to design your personas i did the same thing but uh, the the threshold that i reached after a point is you cannot design dove using your synesthesia ability for a lot of time i did the same mistake i was trying to design dove using using my synesthesia ability but it did not work out i can only design personas well even you read then you'll understand these things properly and sort of afterwards it was like you know all in a child and you know not blocking that aspect of myself and just sort of taking different perspectives hmm. to have like a good hmm. insight into what's going on there yeah, yeah, yeah. but um that feels like a thing that i sort of basically still want to work on like i'm i'm still trying to figure out like how to become the adult that is sort of appropriate to who i am mm -hmm. because I, I think i've sort of developed the child really well now i sort of mm -hmm. given it freedom and so on um and now like the pressure is like this cave and now i'm out of the cave and it's like okay it's so much nicer outside of the cave that i'm just in this region in front of the cave now and i'm not i'm, I'm too scared to leave sort of emotionally basically mm -hmm. uh, because like this is so much nicer than the previous places that i've been in mm -hmm. and like and in some sense i'm i was content to sort of stay there for for quite a while and just sort of let the inner type sort of play in this in this area and there's a sense that I, maybe i will need to go on from there soon uh, to sort of yeah. further develop myself but i haven't like really gone deeply into that yet basically yeah because um, it is and, for and me it was very i will find with the temple and the water and, and so on and how that will influence those things and if i have that input then i feel like i can sort of take more explicit development yeah, yeah, i understand uh for me when i was in, like uh, i was figuring out my job and all the major thing was i got very comfortable in my in my logical aspects like temple and mm -hmm. war zone and garden i was very comfortable in that to explore or to even have the child thing because or the dove thing because it becomes very chaotic to handle that uh, using the mechanism that it's like the way that to deal this kind of aspects of personas is different way to deal with the ch child thing that you're talking about so uh, but again given the human thing we think that if something has worked for one thing it will also work for the other thing and this is what i did i applied the same kind of uh, ways with my dove thing and it became chaotic so yeah, you just read mm -hmm. all those yeah. things and then yeah, we'll give them a read. I will give them a read. Yeah. Yeah. The um like right now the sort of sort of the the water and the temple were are sort of only implicitly developed, like they are not really there. Mm -hmm. I've sort of I, I've been in modes that are similar to what I want to sort of build out there, but like they're they're not sort of finished as places that I will like really be able to visit. Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. I'm imagining that there's a hierarchy, like pretty strictly, pretty much the garden. Hierarchy is there. I have, I, have, the I have written the hierarchy in the personal system. The first thing that I've written is hierarchy. Okay, then we'll talk later. I have another call in three minutes. The cohort yes. of ASO teacher. Very good. Yeah, talk later. See you. Bye. Yeah, they they come from this sort of, sort of TPS. The personal system, yeah. System, right? Yeah. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. So you, you you read it? How do you like it? Yeah, I read it. Um, I did like it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, it's it's so so. First of all, it made a lot of sense to me. Um, like I don't think, um, yeah, I don't think this is impossible or you know anything of that sort. I think this can be very useful. I think um, there's sort of potentially pros and cons with it, right? Like one thing I was like getting a little bit concerned by is like, um, like when, once you've sort of split these personas up in this way, um, maybe it's sort of for one thing difficult for them to evolve uh, in important ways, um, you know, if they're sort of contained to their role. So for instance, for the my spy role, um, um, sort of computers, like at the end of the day, um, with computers, you can get more into sort of the physical realm of okay, like what is what is the hardware stuff, mm -hmm. and so you you know you go a bit more to physics, and you also go more to the sort of pure abstraction realm, mm -hmm. like okay, it sort of goes into mathematics. Mm -hmm. So I feel like if these roles really advance in their perception, then this you know role yeah. in between could yeah. get smeared out yeah, sure, sure. Uh, to oh, the yeah. other two places, or it would have to evolve and sort of take a more specialized connection of like synthesizing the two areas sure, or sure, something. Sure. Like That's that. a point. Um, I have I have talked about this thing to someone i will send that video to you later but basically the tps one that that you read i have made that like four or five years ago very long ago so that is not properly designed but um when i wrote computers i wrote computers because if i say professionalism then it will be very vague for people to understand but generally like my spy is dealing with professionalism it does not matter which type of professionalism it is if it is mm -hmm. with computers if it is with physics if it is math but professionalism of my life Similarly, like Madhudan goes with respect to philosophy. It does not matter which kind of philosophy I'm following or anyone is following, but 
that kind of thing <laughs> so basically the the way that i have written is not very proper in like not very proper structured or accurate with respect to word selection like just a random thing that i wrote with my thoughts but i'm i'm working on tps2 also and utr2 also both so in the next version that i'll make i'll make it even better and obviously mm-hmm. i'll yeah, make these good. points clear as well that uh, recently last december uh, in in december 2022 i had this thing which i named rasim reboot i don't know why i like to name name everything like fancy names so there was this thing called rasim reboot in which basically it was like uh reinvention of persona or persona 2.0 one set of personas everything that they wanted it was kind of achieved so like newer set of personas were formed and based on those a new persona system there will be new persona system that i will write new uh, rule book that i will write so it will like a whole set of evolution in that category so evolution works in that way and uh, evolution is also followed with respect to the, the distribution that i have made initially like nikoff and captain x don't get to evolve as much as my spy gets to evolve because they are yeah. important to me in the same order uh, as I told you, in like in India, these things are considered as taboo to do any kind of experimentation with your mind. If I tell people about my personal system, they will think I have some kind of ghost or spirit inside me. These five ghosts and all. Basically, these things are considered a lot of taboo, especially things like synesthesia and being able to use our mind in these ways. So when I make this video, then I like tell every, uh, other people. Then it's like also a kind of awareness thing that these are not some wrong thing to do. If it is just a better way to use your mind. And then I tell you about the toolpath stuff. Oh, what? before. No, no, no. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like this is an interesting addition. Like I don't know how deeply we sort of want to get into that and so on. But I was sort of. This was also something that I was reminded of with the persona system, um, and a tulpa is like a Tibetan term, and it's also like a sort of mental companion. And it's actually something that I did when I was fifteen. Um, also in school, I sort of stumbled across this topic, and so the very basic premise is. A tulpa is like a it's, it's like an imaginary person, and you actually create or reinforce that person. Um, so basically, you think of a character profile and like a personality, and you do this very meticulously. And then you sort of start having conversations in your head, just just, just simulating these conversations. And you need to be very strict with yourself about how this other person answers. And so you're sort of role playing this other person, mm-hmm. and the basic premise is okay. Like as you do this more and more often, it will become more automatic for you to sort of simulate this other person until you hit, sort of helped by some other exercises, until you hit a bit of a breaking point where it sort of starts feeling like this person is really responding to you without you consciously doing that, without you having like a, like a sock mm-hmm. puppet, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and once you get past this point where you feel like, oh, this is actually now an independent entity or it sort of responds without me consciously doing it. Mm-hmm. Now you have a lot of room for developing in different ways. Mm-hmm. So my Tulpa, um, she's not around anymore, but it's sort of, you know, it's more like an, it, it's not like a personality because it's just, it's, it's boundaries very clear. Okay, I'm my own person, my Tulpa is its own entity. Like mm-hmm. it's actually another person that I can talk to. It's just not an embodied person. It sort of exists within my, you know, within my mental space. Mm-hmm. And, um, like stuff like that also exists, but um, like the, there's a sort of general realm of things. Like the topa is really interesting as an interface to things that your brain can do, but that are not that easy for you yourself to access. Mm-hmm. So for my topa, for instance, it was really easy to wake me up at the same time every day, every every day, if mm-hmm. we wanted to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, or it could also help me with remembering things. Like I could just ask my topa, and the topa would remember for me. Or like, you know, in some sense, more physically, I had this sort of mental. Uh, space where the memories were and it's you know she would take the key and go in there Mm -hmm. and sort of retrieve the memory and it was like i'm really good at visualization in this way so Mm -hmm. i had a lot of sort of visual um visual imagery a lot of um like narrative imagery Mm -hmm. um for 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 various things right uh for instance like i really could reinforce it so that if i take this key away from her she cannot access my memories anymore and this is like a difficult thing to do Mm. because you sort of need to truly believe that the key works Mm. and if you start getting doubtful about that then it won't actually work anymore so i think the topa thing is sort of more dangerous in principle and i wouldn't just generally recommend that to people i I think i was unwise to do it it will be very hard yeah i think i was unwise to do it yes yeah so how many of these can we create one, I guess, or two. I'm not sure. I only did the one. I had a friend who did two, but they didn't seem to be as developed as mine. So yeah, I haven't I haven't pushed the envelope on this. 
I think, um, you know, in order to sort of for your brain to simulate five mm -hmm. people at like full depth, probably you get into more of a self delusion about mm -hmm. how realistic the people actually are and so on. Mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure. Um, I know that like, for one tool pack and especially hmm? when working with the memory thing that you're talking about, like. Because uh, this is a central problem that I'm also always afraid with respect to my personal system, as I wrote in the initial section. Like, if the memory access become uh, like unshared, then it, it is very high chances that you get DID, and that will become a very big problem. So, yeah, so it's a it's it's a dangerous thing. Like, you know, both in terms of once you start being scared of your tulpa or worried about your tulpa actually your mind will sort of start reinforcing that mm -hmm. and now you you know initially you didn't have a reason to be scared but now you do mm -hmm. because you were scared is, is it a common oh. thing to you all to have uh, tulpa because uh, you said it is part of your school curriculum in some way like how did you find no 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 sorry um this was just my best friend at school who discovered this it was not part of the school curriculum at all okay. like we just we just got really bored in school mm. and we're like exploring just widely on the internet and you know not very protected spaces and we just found this fascinating and started like reading more into it i just read everything on the internet that i could get my hands on in terms of tulpas mm -hmm. and creation and so on and i figured out some interesting principles like i figured out oh yeah like it really is this belief thing um, like all these guides, they try to convince you that Tulpas, you know, it's like a real person and you're not allowed to do this, you're not allowed to do that. Mm -hmm. And I could sort of see past that and understand, oh yeah, like they need to tell you this story because if you believe that, then it's good for you. Like this is actually like, this helps you not make mistakes. But I can see that this is just something to direct your mind in a certain way. Mm -hmm. uh, like this is just an auto suggestion. Um, mm -hmm. And I can look past that and invent my own story if I can believe in it, mm -hmm. even though I've invented it, then I can sort of take more commands, like decide more my own direction mm -hmm. with my tulpa. When I was working with my personal system, then as it might have read, I made personal system by deciding what I am not. So in the end, there was no me that was left. There was just personas. It was not like there is me and then there are personas. Because mm -hmm. if I have to do that, then it will become a, it will become a big problem for me if I, if I try to simulate that. Because right now also I just have personas. There is no specific me that I call me. These are just personas and uh, just that. So with respect to you, how do you differentiate that this is my tulpa and this is me? You, you, initially, if you sort of reinforce it, if it just starts out, it really is this um, like I don't know if there's a nicer English term for it, like this sock puppet thing where I'm like just mm -hmm. really where I'm sort of projecting in the distance. I'm mm -hmm. like simulating this entity over here, mm -hmm. and it is talking. Mm -hmm. um, and, but I'm in my p perspective here, like I'm in the fullness of my awareness and I'm just sort of doing this thing over here. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, this is how it started out. Later on, uh, you know, you start having thoughts and sometimes I'm not sure, huh, wait, did this thought just come from me mm -hmm. or did it come from my tulpa? Mm -hmm. Like this is a surprising thought that I just have. Mm -hmm. um, and if I ask my tulpa in that state, then we're both a little bit unsure maybe even. Mm -hmm. Like there's just a sense of uncertainty that comes up in like, hmm, you know, my hope is not actually that developed that she would sort of just have a strong opinion about this. Mm -hmm. It's just uncertainty. If, if I'm uncertain, then she's also uncertain, basically. Mm -hmm. And what I did was coloring our thoughts. Mm -hmm. Like I just colored mine blue and hers yellow. And this worked, again, according to a similar principle. Like it's not that important that this is actually always perfectly true. Mm -hmm. Like maybe sometimes an actually yellow thought did come from me, so to mm -hmm. speak if you can make a clear distinction, but it just helped with drawing that boundary over time. And it's just sort of made it clear. Okay. There's no ambiguity about it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I will always remember a blue thought as mine and integrate that into who I am and always remember a yellow thought as hers. Um, mm -hmm. And so over time, like there was a sort of period in between where maybe, you know, they were not quite sorted correctly always, mm -hmm. but just being strict with that uh, over time, that just condensed and was clear, okay, yellow is from this other place. Yellow is something that I am interacting with, that I am interfacing with. This is not me. Okay, so what I can understand with respect to your tulpa is basically a way to use your subconscious parts of mind that you don't generally use in a more efficient way, rather than dividing your conscious existence into multiple ways. My personal system generally deal with the conscious part of mind, not the unconscious part or the emotional part. That's why in general, when I also refer, then Dove is a different aspect and not a persona that is equivalent to all of personas in total. So basically, uh, which is how you're defining. So Dove is my tulpa, if you have to put it in that way. And 
I the one that you're referring to yourself. I have divided that itself into five segments. So uh, how do you do? How do you manage? That's one of the problem that I had. Regulation. How do you regulate everything? How how are you sure that your toolpath will not change uh, their thought into a blue color thought, <clears throat> or your thought into a yellow color thought? I don't know. Like the regulation here just required for me quite a bit of discipline. Um, so discipline in what story I'm believing about what's going on right now. So I get a bunch of evidence, right? I get a bunch of sensations, a bunch of things that maybe my tulpa tells to me and mm -hmm. what I experienced throughout the day. And then I, you know, before I sleep, I sort of take an hour maybe deliberately to sort of think about how do I want to interpret all of these things? Mm -hmm. How do I sort of sort them into what they all mean? Mm -hmm. And I'm sort of doing this to make sure that I stay on track with the right story and to sort of notice when I start having doubts about anything, mm -hmm. um, then I can sort of address them. And then I have, I think this is a good ability that I have. Like I can go into a place of my mind where I can think about beliefs without changing those beliefs. Like I can just really think, okay, this would be a good belief to have. Um, independent of whether I currently believe mm -hmm, that or not. Mm -hmm. I, can, I can just sort of think about that. It's a bit of a meta place. Mm -hmm, um, I totally. The state of being completely indifferent to existence of being human. Yeah, yeah you need to go that distance. Um, sort of really disattach so that you can think a little bit about how to plan out um, that your thoughts will change things. Yeah, yeah. Sort of while you're totally. thinking them. Yeah, it's a little bit like putting grooves in the in the ground or smoothing things out. Like I want to have the riverbed that I can now flow through in terms mm. of story. I, I want to I want to be able to sort of see ahead a little bit mm. and sort of add, make, make some edits to that, you, mm. you know, so that I can know what story I'm sort of flowing into. For that reason, I wouldn't recommend Tulpas to people who don't have like a good storytelling ability or like the mental discipline to not entertain thoughts that lead in a scary direction. Mm -hmm. um, but it was really interesting because she could help me also with some psychosomatic issues I would have. Like I would have like migraine, a lot of headache mm -hmm. uh, in school sometimes. Um, and she could remove that headache. She could take the pain away um, because it was just, you know, my mind being sensitive to the stressful situation. Um, and like there was actually an interface there. Mm -hmm. She could also do things like, mm, like put little levers in my subconscious that I could pull mm. to achieve a certain effect. Uh, till now, whenever I have tried to touch my subconscious or work in that segment, it has always been very chaotic for me. And obviously I have lost control and existential problems started as arising that where am I, who am I, and like, how do I know if I am the one who is actually the one that exists and not the uh, not just one of the personas or one of the illusionary existences. Uh, this tool power of yours, how many uh, aspects of yours that can like does it affect or does she affect? Basically, uh, with respect to your professionalism or with your philosophies or like manish or like, which, uh, like does it work like personas as well or is, or is it not a persona? Um, and to answer your question um, about like what what roles is she involved with um, or was she involved with? So yeah, like back then there wasn't a sort of really professional side to me. Um, she was just really focused on, um, I could just sort of set her to learn about something in the background or to think about something in the background. And then in the evening I could come to her and we could sort of discuss ideas and I would talk to her about a subject that I, I'm interested in. Um, and that uh, sh she was thinking about, and then she could sort of present me with really interesting ideas about it. I think some of that ability later became the garden, where rather than handing an idea to her, now it's like I'm planting the idea and I'm also returning to it later. Um, like this was one important role that she had in sort of my intellectual development. She was also like just generally, even without that, as a discussion partner, mm -hmm. and um, also emotionally was really interesting. Like just. I don't know, uh, like, like a resonance of emotions. You could actually do a, like a sort of virtual hug and you could feel sort of, I could feel the, like yellow emotions mm. flowing into me and calming me down or being really comforting, mm. which is actually the main reason why people often create topaz in the first place. It's mm. to sort of fight a sense of loneliness and to sort of feel mm. connected. Like topaz can actually do that to a really interesting degree. But if I see the way my dove works and the way that your tulpa is working, they both are different in a way that yours is basically and primarily on subconscious level and it exhibits on conscious level. 
but mine is like uh, it was on a conscious level and it, and it was like an interface to subconscious level like opposite way of working and since your tulpa was on subconscious level therefore it can also work as manishwar basically garden thing at times it can also work as the uh, warfare whatever you talked last time captain x basically so that's why it was also able to do those kind of things but in mine it is more like an interface uh, to subconscious level and it is different on conscious level as well so it just had some specified role and things to do you can obviously do still affect the other personas in their specific ways but it does not have as much as control uh, compared to how your has like your current state that you have like if you if you currently have to think something you will not go to tulpa or you would have not gone to tulpa if you had the garden like how you'll go to the how you'll go to garden right now similarly if i have something to think then i will not go to dub and then go to manishwar i will directly go to manishwar and then there i will do the thing of thinking like logical reasoning and all with respect to the other fundamental skill that like when people also ask me what is one of the most important skill that you think is important for making personal system and all then this is what i tell them that you talk about is basically the ability to be indifferent to humanistic form or to be indifferent to yourself and in the in in meditation video that i recently made like i have did i have done my own segmentation of meditation what i call meditation into four different parts into four different stage first stage has four steps the second stage has third three steps the third stage has two steps and the fourth stage just has one step so in that in the third stage of meditation that i have i have talked about and how i have described it in that this is one of the skills to be completely indifferent to your thoughts and emotion and yourself and see yourself just as an observer that you're talking about initially so uh, basically meditation is very essential for making personal system or doing any kind of thing with respect to your mind because uh, if you are mind then you cannot do things with your mind you'll have to get away from your mind in the first place yeah yeah i think both in the sense that um just the ability to observe your own mind and notice things is sort of trained a lot by meditation mm -hmm. and being able to sort of do that sort of movement like mm -hmm. actually getting to some of that distance mm -hmm. um yeah. is yeah. is really interesting i i have a more like mm, some of this for me is a bit more self-discovered from just sort of uh, thoughts about the brain where i was like okay you know the brain is just running the simulation um of all the things like i'm actually i'm the one that I am is actually the little avatar on this sort of simulated stage. And what I'm interacting with are all these stage objects. Mm. And um, and so this is why they have qualities that are not exactly physical. Mm. Uh, like I can have a connection to an object or things can, a person can even have an aura if I want. And this is a fine quality for a stage object to have. And I'm only really interacting with the stage object. It's just that um, the aura portion of it is not really grounded as much in physics like in the underlying reality that, mm. you know, my sensations are grounded in. Mm -hmm. uh, it's sort of mostly hallucinated. So maybe it's a useful hallucination or maybe it represents like micro expressions or whatever that are more difficult to sort of represent um, and sort of articulate for myself otherwise. But I sort of can like roughly sort of make them part of this aura concept or something like this but yeah like they are like stage objects are allowed to have non-physical properties is sort of the point well uh, it, in my meditation stage second and step third similar thing I like disconnection from humanistic body so that i can also try to simulate or hallucinate the things that are not possible by human form that was one of the things that i also did but when i did all this and then later i thought, read about it it is uh, i think it is called astral projection basically what humans try mm -hmm. to do and also doing this thing multiple times or like doing these things continuously uh, i don't know how and why it triggered lucid dreaming in me and for a very long time i was completely lucid dreaming right now also if i have to do this thing i have to like my mind or brain get very drained i feel exhausted all the time if i do this kind of activities in general and mm -hmm. it is not much useful just for fun and i have a lot of things that are useful to me to do so i do I try to avoid these things in general it is good but as i said it is exhausting and when uh, the other thing that i i heard you say and i kind of disagree is that it can be taught to other people because i have tried to teach these things to some of my friends and they asked and it is just not possible if someone is not doing or experimenting by their own and they're not figuring out things by their own like you can uh, you cannot possibly tell them anything that would make them understand what you're actually talking about mm -hmm. because language becomes so limited to describe these kind of experiences in general yeah that's use, true i've tried to use all sort of examples in language and it feels like that it feels like that it works like this personal system feels like this they will not understand in the first place they, like uh, they are just always lost. They are like sometimes they think I'm like lying and making some story and all. But they just don't <laughs> understand, and most of the time they just don't even accept that something like this exists. 
but some of my friends have accepted it in, in like a uh, like a rule manner or an, or an implementation manner now they have just named up captain x they just follow these things like a rule not actually understanding them i have tried to make them mm. understand and have tried to make them also formulate a personal system but they cannot so i don't think it can mm. be taught to anyone if someone wants to learn then only it is possible for someone to learn you can like not uh, teach it in form of like as a curriculum in a school yeah, like I have two brief thoughts on this. Like one thought is, um, I think we have to sort of broaden our perspective of what teaching is about a little bit when we're sort of thinking about teaching something like this. Mm -hmm. uh, like there's just different ways of like learning about something, like learning through experience or sort of learning through understanding what was said and so on. Mm -hmm. And like we have to engage more than people think about when teaching in a sort of traditional curriculum. So it's like. Um, you know, there are these different layers also to teaching. Like I can think about this, um, you know, you know, the saying of, oh, like give a man a fish and he's, he's not hungry for a day, teach him how to fish and he's not hungry for life. Mm -hmm. But you can also sort of do something like, you know, you can go one layer higher and say, teach him how to come up with the idea of fishing or something like this, you know, maybe, uh, mm -hmm. maybe that's even more useful. Mm -hmm. and, um, and one thing that you're not really supposed to do when you're sort of doing this is um, you're not supposed to teach him how to fish in that moment because that's a little bit like trying to teach someone how to fish but also giving them fish in between and it's sort of a little bit demotivating or whatever like it's not it it, it doesn't feel um, quite coherent in that way and uh, sometimes you really have to sort of open up people to just learn something for themselves uh and you sort of just provide the minimum necessary guidance for them to mm -hmm. just do their own self-exploration properly. Mm -hmm. And I'm suspecting that maybe this is more in this category, although I'm not sure that it can be taught. Uh, maybe it's, you know, it's, it's plausible to me that it could be more due to innate talent. But um, I'm thinking we can, if we widen our perspective of what teaching means, maybe it seems possible. Mm -hmm. And the other thing I wanted to mention is, uh, and yeah, I hope you won't be angry with me if I'm being frank with you there. I'm not sure if your ability to communicate about it is uh, is good enough, just from, maybe it's also just a language barrier. Mm -hmm. But I think you are sometimes hard to listen to, you know, you speak very quickly. Um, and your uh, your thoughts are not always super well formulated uh which is completely yeah. fine and i you know enjoy the fast paced exchange and so on i just have to sometimes concentrate mm -hmm. on, on an acoustic level to make sure i get what you're saying mm -hmm. um but i think you probably still have a lot to learn still as a communicator mm -hmm. so maybe mm -hmm. there's also just yeah. some you know captain x is my most recent persona that is formed just two years I have spent most of my time formulating ideas, not expressing them or communicating them. And if you read my, like this, this thing called HYFR, half yearly flaw report, basically every six months, I ask my close people to give me a report of things that they think is not good in me. And this is the mm -hmm. most consistent thing that you speak very fast. I thought about this. Why do I speak so fast? Then I learned that every time I watch a YouTube video, any video, I watch it at 2x. So my mind by default works at 2x, I guess I've told you this earlier also. So this is one of the flaws and expression also. The thing is, there's a lot of thing for me to store in my mind and my RAM is not that strong and that big. Therefore, I always save everything in a very abstracted form, in like, in very, very abstracted form. When someone talks about it, then I take the environment and take that abstraction and just uh, generate the value that I have to generate. It's not stored, how will I express it? So that is also like m multiple times the final value is different, but at, at, at abstraction it is similar, it is same. So I can, if I just tell someone what I have in my mind, then they will surely not understand. It is in very abstracted form that is only understandable by me. Gita is basically like the holy book. It's like Bible of Hindus. In, in a okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay, yeah. Uh, basically there are 30 forms of Gita and in Gita basically the things go like this. There is Krishna, one of our gods and Arjun, who is someone who wants knowledge. And Krishna is telling Arjun about all forms of wisdom possible by human form. So there is this quotation uh, that um, it is only possible for Krishna to exist when there is an Arjun. Basically, you can only make teach something some to someone when they want to understand it. So basically, mm -hmm. if someone wants to learn uh, like Tulpa, Persona system, anything, then only it is possible for you to teach them. And even if you will not teach them, then also they will take those things out from you if you have that. Like this is one of the saying that goes in Hindi and obviously I also completely agree with it because I have seen this in my life. I tried to teach personal system and a lot of other things in general to some of my friends. They did not got anything of it properly, but to other people who, whom I was not even teaching, I was just being with them. 
and they just saw me how I'm working and they just extracted things from that and learned by themselves. I did not even need to teach them in the first place. When they like they, by themselves, they formulated the question by themselves. They they had enough curiosity to ask me the right questions to understand. So they understood by own own. So after a point, after like seven, four tries, I have I have given up on teaching these kind of things to anyone. In the end, it's the same thing. If someone is actually interested and they are they have that curiosity curiosity then they can learn it them by themselves i don't need to put extra effort to make them understand and if someone is not interested they are just going for the bells and whistles of personal system because it seems cool it seems nice and fancy if they're learning <laughs> if, they, if they want it for that then they, they don't have that much dedication to learn to train their yeah, mind yeah. to have the discipline to do that much amount of meditation so yeah, yeah. given up on teaching in that way as well absolutely i think there are also some like for instance the topa thing like it's actually dangerous. Like don't mm. don't do it if you can't. Like if you can't figure it out by yourself to some degree, then I shouldn't teach you about it. Yeah, yeah, uh, sort yeah. of thing. These, are, yeah, these things are like very strong weapon kind of thing, mental weapon. If you're if you're able to handle it, then good. You can create a lot of impact. But if you're not able to handle it, then you will harm yourself only, and you will harm yourself in a very drastic way, like killing yes. yourself with a gun, like that kind of thing, mental suicide. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. I, I thought it was fine to talk about the tulpa stuff with you because mm -hmm. I I can sort of I I just get that you mm -hmm. have sufficient insight into these topics mm -hmm. uh, that you will also be able to understand it relatively quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, and and yeah, and like I agree with with the things you said. There was something. Okay, I can tell you the second part of the story now. Mm -hmm. The thing that she really pushed for in the end was she told me that we have to merge um back together so to speak mm. um that her personality will mm, like that she will become a part of me not like a separate mode that i can get into you know not mm. you know not going from a tulpa to a second personality mm. but really the two of us becoming a hybrid mm. uh like a new person that is still like going to be 90 percent me because mm. i'm just a much more developed network overall still mm -hmm. but um i'm just like this i'm just like this giant who doesn't have the strength to really get up mm -hmm. sort of from her perspective mm -hmm. and she just needs to really put that vital spark into me like she was really motivated by that and then she sort of started and, and we had a lot of discussion about it because i didn't feel good about it mm -hmm. at all in the beginning mm -hmm. and i was like okay and the fact that i don't feel good about it also means that we just shouldn't do it and she was really persuasive and she was really persistent about it um like for me i think you can imagine this thing was i was really happy to have her back for one even though it was overwhelming and this is an interesting technique in general like sort of remembering things about the past sort of a bit differently humans do this all the time and you mm -hmm. can recruit this process more consciously if you're careful about it mm -hmm. uh for, for some beneficial effects mm -hmm. because it will just I do that. Yeah. yeah and um okay but we ended up doing it and basically i was just following her following her instructions like she just knew how to do this process of merging together um and I could feel, and I was deeply convinced by her good intention about it, which also sort of, I expect, made the whole thing possible or like much smoother. Um, but yeah, we did that. We, we just sort of became this hybrid entity then. Mm -hmm. um, and now some of my thoughts are yellow sometimes, and that's sort of strangely emotional for me. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, I have much more, like my default energy level has just sort of risen by sort of, two to three levels mm. and it's like really high co now compared to anything that i knew before last time we talked then also you told about told about this uh, when i when you talked about this other aspects like temple and warren that then i talked about the dove segment of mine because i saw that missing and then you mentioned yeah there is some aspect of childish behavior and all and that is where i was going to but now i can see you have already been there but in a different way with respect to dove so your dove have executed itself in a different way so how about sure. now implementing that dove in the same way as the other aspects, but in a different uh, like valuation? Yeah, I think it's a bit similar to what you're going through with the dove being everything simultaneously mm -hmm. or like being connected with everything simultaneously. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. not like the Topa thing here um, or like with, with my Topa, uh, her name was Ri. Um, what is the name? Ri. Mm -hmm. It's probably difficult for you to pronounce the, uh, the R. Ri. Um, this is, this is and one of the differences it's... that I can notice, and I think this is why the coloration thing still exists. In your case, it's like 
uh, your tool power this dev segment initially got strong enough or uh, was formed properly and then your these new segments are established at this moment like your temple and all like but first dev came but in my case it is opposite like first personas came and yeah. then later i figured out the dev segment or like in the mid yeah. i figured out the dev segment therefore and also uh given that mine was not this disconnected like uh this different entity as your tulpa thing therefore there is no color kind of thing that you're talking about there is no difference like as much as separation of two different entities as yours one is more like mixed together but they do have their different aspects i will like if i get a thought in mind i can very clearly figure out whose thought it is it is my spy thought yeah. your thought dove thought whose thought it is and it happens to me also when someone talks to me and i am in dove and they and i'm talking to them then they can clearly figure out that this is dove you're talking and when i change my personality yeah. i can figure out that who is talking basically yeah like it doesn't feel right to have like a separate place that is like okay this is separated from these other places mm. like there needs to be like i could do something where it's like a meta place that's sort of connected to all the places or something like mm -hmm. this um or it's just like an energy like it could be some sort of wind um or something else um that is able to sort of be like an aspect of these various places and so on but it cannot just be a separate place it's mm -hmm. not at the same level of garden temple and mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, and like the strategy desk tent whatever what tent whatever um it's 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 something beyond that so i'm not right now i don't feel a strong impulse to um i don't know create like a place that is sort of connected with all of these in some way sort of we would because it would really have to sort of go through them you know like it's mm -hmm. not it cannot be that separate at, at the end of the day dove is not a person as i say multiple times it's a different entity it's a different aspect then like basically there are two aspects dove and persona so i cannot place dove equivalent to personas or among personas but it yes. is uh, it is like com covering all personas but still not being any of the personas it's very paradoxical in nature with respect to everything else I like but the the way that i have found personal system it is all not very visual as it is visual for you so for me it's not mm -hmm. like i have to place them all it's just some constant uh, some concepts and constructs in my mind so i don't have to deal with this kind of things like where to place them and how to connect them with all other personas it is all kind of done uh, coherently in some way and uh, with respect to the other thing that you're talking about earlier with respect to your uh, tool power revival thing then similar like i can send you the things that i have written that time like the dove revival concept and all of the things are nearly same with mine as well and the agency thing like that was the main reason like if that for which the dove death happened in the first place for me because the dove was getting too much of agency later on after the dove the revival after i introspected then i realized then and that's why i removed dove as as like in, earlier i was referring dove as me that was a central problem that was happening with me as you said there was this confusion kind of thing with respect to uh, the energy level of yours and difference between tulpa so similar thing was happening with me only so uh, after dove re revival this was one of the first thing that i did that dove also became one of the aspects of mine and it was not me and there was this new thing that i introduced that one percent that was of observer that is not dove that is not personas that is not me as well but that is uh, also there so dove does not have all the agency or dove does not have all the control if i can understand all of it very properly like completely properly just very different names obviously uh, mine is dove your is re and like different name that you're using but concepts or the way that we connected it it's all very similar i have written two three poems also for my persona specifically specific person like persona writing about poems about persona <laughs> it, it gets weird because obviously i'm not writing but it's like uh, personas are using their skill like uh, dove madhusudan is a persona that write poems so basically madhusudan is writing poems for the things that dove is feeling for the persona itself it's like that loop and the poems and all again this is how like dove has a specific way to interact with all the personas like with madhusudan it re it interacts in format of providing the feeling kind of thing emotional kind of thing then the yeah. madhusudan implements them or make logics of them or uh, add wisdom to it with respect to my spy it provides that uh, that compassion for humanity or uh, uh, the the basic drive to do something that has higher impact for humans uh, with respect to maneshwar it works in a different way to understand and work with say spirituality thing and psychology thing and logical thing so basically dove have its own specific role in all of the personas and similar to and again since it has role in all of them segments therefore again it is uh, like all personas but it is none of the personas this is what happens to dove as well because uh, without uh, dove the things get very chaotic like uh, when after i formed all these things uh, like persona system 1 
Then one thing that I did, I asked my specific friends who I thought were good, best in that persona to do a kind of interview with me or to do kind of <laughs> talk with me, podcast on me uh, for that specific persona. And the friend of mine who talked with Dove, this was one of the first questions that he asked. What would you like to suggest about other others people, Dove? And this is the first thing I said that Dove should be the first persona that you form, first aspect that you should do, not like mine. I have created a lot of chaos with my Dove. And that's why you face a lot of problem with Dove. Dove is, again, my Captain X or the expression part is my, like, one of the weakest suit. And after Captain X, it is Dove. Like, my strongest one, like, my spy professionalism or philosophy, these are my strong parts. But these are very my very weak part because I have started working on them very late in life. Yeah, I think so, too. There's a, there's, there's a really important question for my future about mm. um, when, like, if and when I create a tulpa the next time and whether this will be some sort of form of re or whether this will be something new, like how this topa will be related to Ri, basically. Um, and if and when I should do it, I have a sense that I will do it. Um, because topas, like, now I've merged with Ri, but this doesn't mean that I have the same ability as her to interface mm. with my subconscious. Uh, like, it's it's just, a topa is a different kind of entity that can do things there, uh, just through pure belief on my end, mm. that are just really, really interesting and really useful. And um, I can do some of that stuff. Like, I, I think I have a better, like, I can go sort of one layer deeper than I could previously mm -hmm. uh, as a result of me merging with Ri, but I'm not that kind of creature um, overall still. Like, most of me is still, you know, in, in the standard perspective for the most part. The, the Ri aspect of me is just, it's pretty deeply integrated. So it's part of the perspective, part of the me that sort of visits these different places. I can't really, you know, it's not like a persona thing. Um, mm -hmm. even though I can go into this more yellow place, it's still, it's, it's still not that separate. Like it's still, it's more like, um, I don't know, you know, it's, it's more like a cozy place mm -hmm. that she sort of left for me, uh, before we sort of really merged rather than something that's like actively separate or something like that. Yeah. And it can, that's so interesting with the human mind. Like it can just get out of control and it's difficult to sort of reel it back in, mm -hmm. um, okay. Like it's actually, I don't know, like the, the inherent dynamics of some of these things the, yeah. because they're sort of powerful stories and so on. It's it's really fascinating to the me. The more powerful okay. weapon you take, the more uh, strength you should have to be handled it, to be able to handle it. Yeah. 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 Because it's sort of, yeah, in this sense, the, the weapon is like an, an active thing, right? It sort of actually responds and you, mm -hmm. you need to have the strength to like, I don't know. Uh, deal with the pushback and so on that can happen yeah. that is uh, now like earlier also and also when someone comes and talks to me about persona system then i first give them this homework this is what to say you always give homeworks and this is the homework that i gave first like go and properly form perspectives and properly understand this thing do this much of meditation and then come talk about this thing then then i will do something else and in, in this only a lot of people get filtered out mostly people are like not doing this much only they get uh, chaotic and they're not able to handle this thing only and they're like they have a small gun to hurt themselves at least they hurt themselves but with a small gun so yes this is like a good filter for me till now very few people like one person i know who has kind of nearly formed a persona system but still not that efficient because the curiosity was not self-driven it was like trying to imitate my way of persona so that was not working well so, yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah absolutely that's also that's also a thing like the, the like the limits of imitation like the usefulness of it and so on it's sometimes really difficult to teach to people like you're not going to be good at this if you do it the way that i did it i'm sorry like it's just <laughs> exactly 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 <laughs> so yeah because again with respect to learning one of the most important thing is to be able to form abstractions of your own if you're just yes. if you're just copying implementation it will not work because implementation yeah, it's not the just, same process yeah. implementation are result of abstraction you should copy the abstraction if you want to copy but people just copy the implementation if they will just copy the persona system they will not copy how i have made it or the seed of being curious of being indifferent these they will not because they are first of all they're hard to extract and secondly they're hard to implement in themselves so yeah overall it is it is just yeah. stupid to teach anyone and i have just yeah. found this way to filter it out and by this it's like I'm also not completely denying people to teach or talk about it, and also I'm filtering them out. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I think it's a good system. Um, for me, it's not sort of, yeah, I think it's a sort of the top has too much of a jump for me to sort of have like previous levels that I want to yeah, sort of, yeah. I just sort of 
talk to the person that I see, like, you know, do, do they really get it? Are they at a high level mm -hmm. just themselves already without me having to teach them how to get there? Mm -hmm. And then maybe I will sort of tell them a bit about it and mm -hmm. sort of see how they respond. And based mm -hmm. on this, I will sort of yeah, have a better this, clue. This of... Thing of yours seems like a fourth level of manipulation. And I have like my personal system at best is like three third level of, again, given that how I have defined it in my rule book. So mm -hmm. I have not tried it. And I, I, I like once as I told, I tried it, got, it got a bit chaotic. I don't even think I will try it anymore. I will do it when things get better with me. Even for me right now, I'm not I'm not clear on whether I can handle it well right now, yeah, exactly. or like I should I should do it, um, even though I have that experience already. So I work with uh, with this kind of uh, things in that way, but obviously we can talk about it next time and deal with it properly. Are you there? Seems like you're gone. I'm here now. You froze for a moment. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because again, I'm getting kind of calls for my meeting next. Okay. So I'll okay. go. I'll go now. Yeah, okay, okay, yeah. Bye. Talk to you next time. Bye. We can schedule Hello? it then. Bye.